I'm Dennis. I'm Andrew. We're, We're the Crafty Lumberjacks. Yes. If you know us, you know we love our Cricut Maker. Yes, and if you're a beginner, you came to the right place because today we are going to be breaking down how simple and easy it is to add iron on vinyl to just about any fabric you have in your home. Yes, we love it because you can customize and personalize almost anything. We've, We've made, made our own Disney hoodies. Our own festive pillows. Cozy socks. A canvas pouch. A felt pouch. A hipster banner. We've even ironed onto wood. That's a whole other video. Next time. Today we're gonna to be focusing on a tea towel and a cute little cotton bag. Yes, and we're gonna take you step by step, show you the basics and our favorite tips and hacks on finding your image on Design Space, sizing it, cutting it out, and then ironing it on to your fabric. Yes, and once you kind of know these basic simple steps, you can really iron on Anything and yeah. everything except for your animals, your pets. Please don't no, do no. that. Although Teddy might like that. I think he I think he would. <laughs> All right, you might be asking yourself, what is iron-on vinyl? Essentially, it's a heat-activated sticker that the machine will cut. Once it's all cut out, you'll use heat to adhere it to your fabric. Yes, it comes in rolls like this. You can buy it at your local craft store or online, iron-on vinyl. The best part about it is it comes in a wide variety of colors and different materials that work differently depending on what type of fabric you're working with. To get started, we need to pick out an image. Cricut comes with its own design software called Design Space. In Design Space, you can upload and create your own images, or you can use one of Cricut's thousands of pre-made images and projects, and that's what we're gonna do. Yes. Keeping it easy. You know. That's how we roll. Okay, <laughs> sometimes. So here's Design Space. They have a handful of projects that are pre-made that you can make, but today we're going to be creating our own image. So you wanna to go to New Project, and then on the left side, there's Images. Click that, and you're gonna to come to a page where they break it down into categories. Now, we can get stuck looking through images all day long, especially me. So we like to come in with an idea of what we're looking for. So for our kitchen towel, we're thinking maybe something with fruit. So I'm gonna search orange. And then it's yeah, gonna break look, look down. Look how many. Yep. That's a lot of, That's lot of oranges, a lot of oranges. A lot of orange options. Yeah, so you can see there's the color orange, there's actual oranges. So we like to just scroll until we see something that we like. Okay, oh, I like I like this one. So I'm gonna click this and here's a good tip. Click the I, that's the information button, and it's gonna say view image sets. So click that and it's gonna show you images that are like it. They're usually by the same creator. I don't know, I'm kind of feeling this one. What do you think, Dennis? Go for it. All right. Okay, so we clicked it, and then you wanna to go to insert image on the bottom right corner. Click that, and it's gonna bring it right into uh, your project. Just need to size it and make sure it will fit on our towel. We have this cute little uh, ruler that we use all the time. We're obsessed with it. We use it for all our projects. I'm just gonna roughly measure, I think about six and a half. Yeah, I think that'd be good. Would do well. And then you could come over here to your image, click on it and then this little box will come and use these arrows to enlarge or shrink down your image. They also have the little uh, writing there where you can see the measurements. And if you don't wanna drag it, you can actually even type the size that you want right on top there. I like to drag it. The more you work with the, the Cricut Maker and the more you work with Design Space, you'll find out which works best for you and what you like doing. I personally like going Ready to go, we're going to click make it on the top right hand corner, that green button, and the machine will bring us to the next screen. Looks good here. The one important step whenever you're working with iron on is to remember to mirror your image. It won't make too much difference here for our image because it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's just like, it's oranges. Yeah, it's, it's, yes. But if you're working with writing or any type of lettering, um, because essentially what happens is the machine will cut it out backwards and then you iron it on so that it is the right facing way. Yeah, so mirror it just means it flips the image over. Yeah, so if you so don't do that, make sure yep. you click it. So it will be green and that's how you know you've mirrored the image. Yes, if now, you don't, your letters will be backwards. Everything will be backwards. Yes, and you'll have to start all over again. Oh, no. All right, so now you go down to here to continue. You know, bring it up to our next screen. And again, the computer will walk you through each step. So now we have to pick our material, which is our everyday iron-on. We have it here as a favorite, uh, but you can go to browse all material. 
And then you could type in whichever material you're working with. Here's iron, all right. And then these are all the different types of uh, iron-on that Cricut has to offer. So you can use express iron-on, flocked iron-on, they have foil, glitter, all of these different types of iron-on. Uh, we're boring, <laughs> so we're just using everyday iron-on. You click it, hit done, and then it will bring you to the next step here. Low tools and materials. We have to use the fine point blade for this project. This is actually the blade that comes with the machine, so you don't need to buy anything else. You already have this one. We're gonna pop that in. And now it's time to load our mat. Here's the vinyl, it comes in a roll. There's a matte side and a shiny side. We have some leftover from another project and that's what we're going to use. I'm just gonna cut it down to size. We like to do that just so, you know, we don't waste any vinyl and we can use smaller scraps for other projects. Yes, but of course you can just use a bigger piece and then the machine will cut out what you need and then you just take what you need. Absolutely, <laughs> so we're just gonna be using a standard grip mat and we're gonna place it shiny side down. And we're just gonna put it right in the corner and press it pretty well. And now we're just gonna load the machine. So I'm just gonna stick it in just like this, press the button. The machine will prompt us on what to do so we don't have to worry about too much. Yes, and the machine will also double check to make sure that everything looks good, you have the right blade and uh, you're ready to go. Yeah, now the machine's telling me to press go. And then Cricut steps in as your, your craft assistant. And I'm just gonna press unload and then take it off my mat. Now, a tip we like to do is to flip it over and just pull from there. That just helps so the vinyl itself doesn't curl too much. Now there is a shiny side and a matte side, like I said, the shiny side is actually a backing. So you don't wanna do anything with that, but the front side is where we're going to weed our image. I think it's a little hard to see, but it, in person it looks really good. For weeding, I'm gonna be using a weeding tool. It actually looks just like a pick from a dentist. Yes, yeah, sidebar, our apartment actually used to be a dentist's office. That's true. So creepy. So you just wanna take it and then peel away all the stuff you don't want. Yes, and you know, you don't need this pick. Like, uh, they, they, they're not that expensive, but you can use tweezers or even your fingers to remove this. Um, and I love peeling these off. It's like oh peeling gosh. off a face mask. I know, it's like a little rubbery. It's really fun to do. Oops. Yeah, so actually I'm gonna use my fingers for these big sections. And a good tip is when you start getting to those smaller sections, I like to reference the image I'm weeding just to make sure I'm weeding the right parts. Yeah, you don't wanna uh, you know, peel away anything that you need um, because then again, you have to start all over. We don't want that to happen. You know, sometimes actually we forget to weed certain areas and we just kind of roll with it. We're yes. like, whatever, no, nobody's gonna know. Nobody's They're gonna, gonna know. know. Oh yeah, I know that project <laughs> you're talking about. Yes. But also if you have to start a project over, I know it's frustrating, but it's happened to all of us just because I think people think like, oh, you know so much about cricket, you must never make mistakes. Uh, no, we make, mistakes, we make mistakes all the time. I forget to mirror things uh, oh my gosh, a little yes. too often. That one, we need a, a note on the computer that's like mirror <laughs> yes. the image. Looking good, Yeah, so cute. This really is so satisfying to do. Here's what we need to iron on the iron on. Yes, and actually Cricut recommends pre-washing whatever fabric you're working with. You know, but honestly, we've never done that and we've never had a problem. But honestly, if you're new to this and you want the most successful transfer, you're going to want to follow Cricut's guidelines, which is to pre-wash your fabric. Yeah, we're using the Cricut Easy Press mat, but if you don't have one, that's just to protect the surface. If you don't have one, you could use a towel. It would be fine. And you need a lint roller, and you need an iron. You could use one that you have at home, but we really like to use the Easy Press. Yes, and we like the Easy Press because it's essentially a smart iron. You can set the temperature, you can set the time, um, you know, but this is stuff you don't have to remember. And anytime we work with an iron-on project, we always go to Cricut's Heat Guide. Do a Google search of the Cricut Heat Guide or it's directly on their website there. 
And then you choose the Cricut Easy Press that you have. They have a wide different variety of types and colors. We have the Cricut Easy Press too, so you click that. And then you click your heat transfer material. So we're actually using the Everyday Iron-On, remember? You'll be quizzed on this later. Yes. <laughs> and then select base material. So this is great because they have all different types of fabric materials listed here. You can even iron on wood. Um, we're actually, our towel is a cotton poly blend. So we click that and they give you the option here. You either have the Cricut Easy Press mat or a towel. We have the Cricut, Cricut Easy Press mat, apply. And then it tells you exactly what we need to preheat our um, Easy Press 2 and for how long. It tells you light pressure, it will say hard pressure. It also kind of guides you through flip and press for 15 seconds. Cool peel, so you'll wanna let it cool down before you peel off the backing. And it also gives you another breakdown here of what you need, how to prep, you know, and, and, and the general care after the iron on. So we love the heat guide, we always use this. Here's the number one reason you need a lint roller. I feel like every pet owner knows what I'm talking about. Hi, Teddy. Hi. He's made this his bed. Our heat press is all ready to go. I'm just going to use my lint roller here in the center where we're going to place our image. You want to set your image with the matte side down and the shiny side up. But before we do that, we're actually going to preheat our towel for about 10 seconds. You just place it on the center there. I like to apply like uh, moderate pressure. Yeah, and this is good also because it kind of irons out the fabric so you don't have any wrinkles and it also helps with the heating process. So it actually, this will kind of like stick down a little bit. And now we're going to put our heat press on top. And then I'm going to press go and then you'll see the timer starts to start there and it will count us down and then once that counts us down to 30 we're actually going to flip the towel uh heat it on the back side and then we'll check to see if it worked and then just heat it on the back side a little bit um it says here for about 15 seconds so i'm going to do it for about 15 seconds you can use the timer or just count down yourself so this says a cool peel i like to check my work i could already see that it's not it did not adhere to the towel there. So I'm actually gonna use my easy press and uh, press it down a little longer. I just check when you're about to peel and always peel really slowly because yes. then, you know, your mistake won't be a big tip. issue. Until it's a little better. I'm actually gonna let that sit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you we'll peel it when it's too hot, sometimes it's just not ready. If you let it cool for just a couple of seconds, sometimes that helps. Yes. It's nice and cool to the touch. Now we're going to start peeling slowly and uh, see if it works. Yeah, you really want to go nice and slow just in case it's not fully adhered, you can fix your mistakes. Yes, especially when you have like a lot of detail work. It looks like it's doing pretty good though. It looks so great. I can totally see these on Etsy or Target, but the best part about it is we made it ourselves. We and did. you can customize and cater it to your own liking, your own style. I, I just love working with Iron On. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna work on our second project. We're gonna do it super quick, just to refresh everything we went over. The only difference with this, we're gonna use the Easy Press Mini. It's just a smaller version of the Easy Press. And let's get started. Start a new project in Cricut Design Space and search for your image. Then you'll want to measure your base material and resize it accordingly. Click make it and then be sure to mirror your image. Follow the prompts, pick your material and lay your iron on shiny side down onto your mat. Be sure to press it well, load the machine and follow the prompts. Unload the mat and start to weed away any unwanted parts of your image. Enjoy this process. It's so satisfying. Use Cricut's recommended heat guide as a reference for your best transfer. When working with clothing, a tote bag, or a canvas pouch, it's always a good idea to place a piece of cardstock in between the layers just so nothing goes through. Don't forget to use a lint roller and preheat your fabric. Place the image face down with the liner side up and then follow the instructions on the heat guide and heat it up. Flip it over and press the back, then check your work. If it looks like it needs some extra heat, you know what to do. Carefully remove the backing for the big reveal. 
I mean, these look so good. Pretty soon you're going to be ironing on everything. Yes, I hope we made this seem a little more approachable, a little less daunting, and we helped answer some questions. Yes, we want to hear about your first experience using Iron On in a comment below. Yes, and you can find us all over social media, Instagram, TikTok, uh, Twitter, yes, Crafty, Crafty Lumberjack. Lumber Jack. Check even us have out. a blog. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's true. And we'll see you soon. Happy making. Bye. I'm Andrew. I'm Dennis. And we are the Crafty Lumberjacks. You have your space in need of some sprucing. Couple of guys worth introducing. They know their way around the craft store. Finding deals and oh so much more. What should you put in your kitchen nook? Trust Dennis and Andrew. They wrote the book. A little bit of glitter and creativity. Crafting up some fun is their cup of tea. Bring your hot glue gun. Grab some snacks. Time to get artsy with the Crafty Lumberjacks. Can't read my cue card.